Yeah. All right, everybody, what's going on this Monday night? It is comedy night, and this is the Jess Jobs Comedy Calamity. Um, I hope that you can uh, keep your chatter down to a minimum, keep your phones on silent if possible. Uh, if you do have to have a conversation, take it outside, and you can go up the back steps to be more discreet, go out the side door. Um, this is how the show works. Um, comedy get, comic gets up here. I put out a premise every week. Um, this week is I have superpowers, but they're stupid and useless. I, an example would be that um, I, I can make people's socks damp in their shoes. You know, <laughs> like what can I use that for? I don't know. Maybe a super villain. But um, then uh, they got five minutes to do it. Um, I go through bullet points with what they said. The judges get to comment, uh, so on and so forth. There are sheets of paper up here where you can be part of the judging if you would like to. You got to judge every comic, and um, uh, the sheets are up here and the pens are up here. I was putting them out all over the place, but people stopped kind of couldn't, you know, doing it. So I was like, if they don't want to do it, I ain't putting those damn sheets out there. Y'all coming? But anybody that wants to do it can. Also, all the stickers and the buttons are free. And I got one last bottle of hot sauce. That's the Happy Bones uh, Blaze of Smoke Sauce. And then it's real good. You know what I'm saying? And then um, I got one shirt left if anybody wants to double XL. Wait, no, it's an XL. It's an XL. They call it a happy medium. <laughs> um, I appreciate y'all coming out. This is a good crowd tonight. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and call everybody up in the order that they arrived. And the first person that showed up was always uh, the on time guy because he's in the military currently, um, Mr. Pete Barlow. And he is a house favorite of ours. Everybody give it up for Mr. Pete Barlow. All right, all right, all right. Good evening, Fox's Lair. Uh, folks, I was not going to come here tonight to perform until I remembered that Dave Miner would also be here performing, and I needed to stop him from winning again. <laughs> Folks, it's not that I mean or hate Dave Miner. I just know that if his head gets any bigger, he's going to need an even larger backwards baseball cap. I like your outfit today. You're really rocking the Nirvana fan who woke up from a 34-year coma. Who wants to break the news to him about Kurt Cobain, everybody? No. Oh, man. Uh, before I get started, happy Veterans Day, everybody. Do we have any, uh, make some noise for that? Woo! Do we have any uh, veterans in the crowd tonight? Yes. Sir? Thank you. Oh, is both of you? No, she's not here. All right. Uh, she, well, she, she was sitting right there, but she's not there right now. Understandable. Rest in peace. <laughs> but that's for Memorial Day. But, sir, thank you for being here instead of going to the literally thousands of restaurants that would be offering you free food right now. It's, it's nice to know I'm not the only sucker who's in this room right now. Fantastic. Almost every restaurant. Now, folks, uh, this week's topic roughly is you're a hero, but your superpower sucks. And if I'm being honest, I did not need to imagine a scenario for this uh, because I already live that existence, and that's being a soldier in the army. Because, folks, all the time people are like, all service members are heroes. All of you are heroes, true American heroes. Folks, I spend like eight hours a day at work deleting emails and occasionally printing them out because my boss does not know how to use the printer and I do not know how to teach him. <laughs> Bottom line up front, not everybody who wears a cape is a hero. It's also worth noting um, I have deployed. Sir, did you deploy? Yes, twice. Oh, uh, where did you deploy to? I was on a call Vincent and deployed to the Middle East and uh, the Pacific Theater. All right, fantastic. Chairwoman, uh, where did you deploy to? Okay, she doesn't feel like talking about it, folks. She doesn't have to. You just keep on trucking. Uh, folks, I have deployed to Afghanistan, lovely country. Um, now, folks, I always hear that every veteran of a foreign war is a hero. Obviously, you hear that. These are our heroes. Salute the troops, our heroes. Every cable news network does that. Now, folks, I don't know if being in Afghanistan automatically <laughs> makes me a hero, 
But I am proud to say that I am part of less than 1% of Americans who have masturbated in Afghanistan. <laughs> like, folks, every time I see that country in the news, I'm like, I jacked it there. <laughs> Weekly for 13 months. Like, it's, I've got a Pavlovian reaction to this. Like, I'm not sure if you can identify, but every time I see a portage on, I'm like, just automatically get an erection. It's just like, ah, oh, the memories. Uh, but enough about my junk, folks. Now, if we are going with the topic of being a service member is being a superhero, uh, one thing I have going for me is I do have a very solid alter ego a la Clark Kent. And you're looking at it right now, folks. Because here's the thing. Every time I tell a civilian that I'm in the army, they always give me a very supportive, wow, you, that's surprising. You, nothing about you evokes a service member at all. The last job I could ever picture you having. <laughs> Folks, I'm always tempted to just counter that with, oh, I'm not actually a soldier in the army. I'm a serial killer. Because I know their response would be, okay, now that I could see. <laughs> Like, I could, if you haven't started, I could see you being great at that. Like, you're just giving off those vibes. True story. Shortly after I joined the army, um, I was at a mall with some friends, and we all had the high and tight haircut. We were all very, like, getting used to wearing civvies again. So it was just all kinds of awkward, mismatched. And this civilian came up, looked at the two of them, looked at me, looked at the two of them, said, hey, thank you for your service to this country. Turns to me and goes, and you are such a supportive friend. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Folks, I'll be honest, didn't mind it, because here's one thing that every service member can empathize with. They do not teach you how to react to thank you for your service. Like the first seven years of my army career, I just responded with, you're welcome. <laughs> which is apparently the wrong response. So if any of you just want to like spit on me and call me a baby killer, like, I'm, like I'll be relieved. I'll be like, Ooh, I know how to react to that. All right, well, my name's Pete. That's been my time. Thank you very much. All right. Oh, man. I was, just, I was waiting for you to do, to, to do the thing you said. I'm not going to steal a joke, but I'm going to steal a joke. Damn. Where you say thank you. Thank you for your taxes. Remember last week we had the conversation back there? And I was like, I, I was like, I always thought if I was in the military and they were like, thank you for your service, sir. I'd be like, thank you for your taxes. On behalf of service members everywhere, thank you for paying my paycheck for the last 14 years. <laughs> That's what I thank you for. Otherwise, I wouldn't have been there, sir. Trust me. I don't even know who Afghanistan, why I was there. So uh, Afghanistan has got some really good weed. You know that's where sour diesel came from. I do not know. I have to pee in a cup every month. Oh, <laughs> man, bummer. Did you ever get a whiff of it? I did not. But apparently they've got really good heroin too there. So if that's your style, <laughs> lots of poppies. Chase the dragon. You said that Dave had a big head, which is the opposite of pandering. And then you said, thank you to the vets. And that is pandering. You son of a bitch. I've talked about this before. Um, you called yourself a sucker and the other service people that came here instead of going and getting a free meal. And that was just cold. We could be at the Olive Garden right now. <laughs> <laughs> and you masturbated in the desert. That's that's hardcore. Now, does it matter what color the porta potty is or just like any porta potty? Is? Oh, any of them. It's just love is blind. Because I imagine them like, I imagine them like pixelated, like the, you know, the desert uniform. For, <laughs> so you can't see them. But you're like, oh, man, they look so good. Yeah, but then what if you had to poop? You couldn't find them. them. Yeah, I know. You have to focus real hard. That's what makes them sexy. You know, there's, it leaves a little to the imagination. That's what I'm saying. It was old school, like the 50s. Like those, uh, what do you call those things? Bathing suits in the 50s? I don't know. You were allowed in the 50s. So I'll tell <laughs> <laughs> uh, Clark Kent getting patronized by the folks. That's just cold-blooded, man. I feel you on that. Because I did. I asked you one time. I was like... Do you ever have to like tell people that are like way bigger than you and they're like jacked? Like you gotta tell them what to do because he's a sergeant and shit. And he said, "Yeah." And I said, "Well, 
I said, well, here's something you can do because one time me and Raven was, Raven comes up to my hair on me, and she, and she, we, she was fussing at me, and I, I kind of giggled, and she was like, don't make me come up there. <laughs> and I was like, you can do that with your service guys, and he was like, I don't know if that'd go <laughs> over the same. <laughs> <laughs> but do you like the guys you work with or no? It's like 50 50. <laughs> he said during the hurricane, he told him that he would come and save him if he needed to. But then he turned his phone off. So <laughs> They were really annoying. They were like, we need food and water. And I'm just like, it's 2 a.m. <laughs> hey, That's tomorrow's problem. Don't you have a water faucet? I'm just bullshit. You want to talk, Mr. Onion? Tell them what's going down. <laughs> Well, you How dare you? my hero. Uh, started off, as always, with uh, uh, with relating to the crowd, your love of Dave's head, <laughs> your love of your own head. <laughs> Too much information that was last week. Well, true. But I also say uh, you have two cadences that you use with your routines. And personally, I like this one the best, where you're actually just communicating with the crowd. Uh, coming up with that as you're on your way here, very personable. I thought that was really good. Thank you very much. Hey, well, yeah, what you got to say, Doug? Pete, Pete, Pete. Uh, always breaking it, man. Love what you do, and uh, the more I hear you military guys talk about military life, the more I realize I made the right career choice. Yeah, you yeah, literally and figuratively <laughs> dodged a few bullets. Yeah, right, 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 right. But great job, man. Love you. Uh, Hell yeah. Everybody give it up. Oh.